Am I the a-hole for showing my daughter the text her fiancé sent me? I'm a widower with two children, 23-year-old biological daughter and 17-year-old stepson, Adam. My late wife passed away two years ago, leaving me to care for Adam, disabled, wheelchair-bound. His sister loves him, and she always visits and checks in on him. Her fiancé Mike and I don't get along because of how he behaves around us. Unlike us, Mike comes from a prosperous family, and they always tend to show off what they have. Mike treats my daughter well, but acts as if me and my family were less than. He doesn't eat nor drink anything at my house. He and his mom make comments about our living space and constantly brag about what his family got. My daughter was visiting and said she wanted me and her brother be at the wedding to share her day. The day I received the invitation, Mike called and expressed how he and his family weren't thinking Adam's presence at his sister's wedding was necessary. He went on about his family's upper-class guests and how Adam's presence would feel… out of place, and suggested I come alone. I told him my daughter said she wanted Adam there, but he kept coming up with suggestions till we started arguing. I checked with my daughter to clear any misunderstanding, and Mike then said Adam could come. I then got texts from him talking about how it's his wedding, so I needed to stop sticking my nose where it doesn't belong. He mentioned my son isn't technically family anyway, so it wouldn't matter if he's uninvited. Claiming I was trying to be mean on purpose to make it hard because I don't like him. He finished by saying that this is my fair warning, and that if I choose to make my son's presence at the wedding my hill to die on, then I just signed away any rights to any future grandchildren he and my daughter will have. That was it. He kept calling, but I blocked him. I invited my daughter to my home to tell her I won't attend if my son won't. She asked what happened. I showed her the text Mike sent me, and she was shocked. Said nothing. Just took a picture of it and left. My sisters came the next day, saying the wedding was off after a huge argument between Mike and my daughter because of me. Argued that I created this problem when I showed my daughter the text. And I could have respected the groom's rules since it's his wedding. But I was being controlling not wanting my daughter to be happy. Went on about Mike being high class, a man with a salary, his own house and car. More relatives were saying they would have had someone watch Adam if this was the issue. But it wasn't. Then they claimed it was because of my resentment towards Mike. Now for the top comments. Not they hole. You saved your daughter from getting married to an ableist bigot. It was much better for her to find out what is really like now than after they're bound together by legal paperwork. Holy cow, this! Imagine how she would feel if she didn't find out until after marriage, or worse, after kids? She cares about her brother, and her fiancé showed his true colors. Better to find out before it becomes more complicated to leave. Not a hole. Not a hole. Oh, hell no! Do not let your daughter marry that prick. If Opie prevented daughter marrying Mike, he'd be just as bad as Mike. Hopefully he stays true to her word now that she's realized what a scummy, controlling snob he is. Not a hole. The wedding is not off because of you. It's off because of Mike's snobbishness and ableism. You know the old thing about how you can tell a person's true self by their treatment of waitstaff and cashiers? It applies equally well here. Your daughter deserved to know what her fiancé was saying. She might not be happy right now, but your daughter dodged a bullet. You're the one who yelled at her to duck. Not a hole. The wedding is off because your daughter realized that if her fiancé was willing to treat her brother this way, then he wasn't the type of man she wanted to spend her life with. Tell your gold-digging sisters that Mike is now single. They can chase after him if these assets are so important. But you have a family that cares for each other, and that's all you need. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hull for rudely telling my husband I decide who is in the delivery room? So for context, I, 28 female, am currently pregnant with my partner, 31 male, and am a first-time mom. My hospital recently changed their policy and are now allowing to support people in the delivery room. My mother-in-law made comments early on that she wanted to be there for the birth, and this woman is not subtle. At the time, I felt protected by COVID protocols, but set that expectation straight. I explicitly stated that any time I give birth, it will be a private medical experience that only includes my husband and medical team. I thought that it was clear it wasn't a debate, 
because it's my body and I have the autonomy to decide who sees it in any context. Additionally, I do not have a good relationship with my mother-in-law. She just recently started initiating positive interactions after years of me trying, and it's absolutely because she's an it's my grandbaby person. Recently, my husband told me we needed to have a discussion. He starts off by saying he mentioned the support person protocol change to his mother. I tried not to react, but immediately I blurted out asking why he would do that. He goes on to say he knows his mother really wants to be in the room to see the baby's first breath. I replied logically, if your mom sees their first breath, she will also see me pushing and will be looking down at my canal. I actually had to explain why I refuse to give birth in front of his mother. I then told him that there are only two priorities in the delivery room, and neither of them are his mother or her feelings. The discussion continued back and forth. Finally, I started crying. I told him that the labor and birth will be most painful and vulnerable experience of my life and that I need him to protect me. I told him that anyone who refuses to protect their pregnant partner failed them, and it's just dead weight in the delivery room. My husband told me I'm rude, other negative things too, left our apartment, and when he came back, he wasn't speaking to me. This is where I think I could be the a-hole. I told him giving me the silent treatment, because I won't let his mother spectate at my most intimate area rips open, was very immature, it made me worry if he has the emotional intelligence to support me in the delivery room. I think my husband took my hint, but I didn't explicitly say that I can decide he won't be allowed in there either. I will say I would be devastated if I had to do that and never thought this would ever be a problem during my pregnancy. So, am I the a-hole? Info. I did cuss when talking about freaking ripping, but that was it. I also wasn't yelling but I was sobbing loudly enough during it that my neighbor next door knocked to check on me after he left. Edited for added info, I saw some questions. Sorry about not including this originally. I'm a mess currently. I have a mother and two sisters, both moms, who I love endlessly, but I didn't ask any of them to be in the delivery room because I only wanted my husband there. Also, I did not yell at my husband at any point during this interaction. I was sobbing. I didn't lose my cool. In fact, my husband's screaming was why my neighbor in the apartment next door heard and came and knocked after he left. She told me when I answered the door, I move slower these days, that she was so glad I answered because she was considering calling 911. Not day hall. Your husband pulled a moronic move going behind your back to let mother-in-law know she might be able to be in there. That, my dear, is fully 100% up to you. In fact, I think you need to let the staff know that under no circumstances is she allowed in the room. Give them a close-up mugshot of her. This 100%. If possible, let them know ASAP so that if she tries to get in on the day, they can kick her straight out. And skip kicking her out and go straight to having her arrested. Not day hall. This is insane. Hold your ground, Opie. Ask your husband how he'd feel if your dad chaperoned a future vasectomy. You know, to provide support and coach him through it. Some people need analogies. Not day hall. What is with all the mother-in-laws in the world suddenly deciding they need to see the birth of their grandchildren? No mother-in-law I've ever met thought she deserved to be in the delivery room. It's completely up to you who is in the room. But beware, she might try to sneak in. Make sure the hospital staff knows it's just you and your husband. Maybe have him watch a video of a live birth so he understands how absolutely vulnerable you will be in that moment. Thank you for the suggestion because I was thinking of this but was worried I was being over the top. I told him I wanted him to watch a human birth when he brought us up. Now it's required because honestly, I don't want him in the room if he's so ignorant and uneducated on the process. Because then he really will just be dead weight and probably will cause me and the baby stress. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for finally telling my sister I asked to move in with my dad to get away from her? My sister Hannah, 26 female, is two years older than me, 24 female. Growing up with her was fine until she turned 10, and then her personality just switched. Everything was an argument. I have no idea if it was really triggered by her dad leaving the country, back to Honduras, or mental health issues. I never ask, because she never wanted to talk about it. While Hannah and I share a mom, 
we do not share fathers. Mom wasn't with either of our dads, romantically, for long. Now don't judge her for that, it is just how things were. My dad stuck around, wanted everything to do with me. Hannah's dad was around until he left, got married, and rarely called. I went through a lot of instability and told my dad how miserable I was. Mom couldn't focus on both of us. Sometimes, my dad would pick me up and take me for a week. I would come back to my things ripped up, Hannah clinging to me, or her shouting at me that she hated me, wanted me to go away. My mom didn't know how to make it stop, and I seemed to be the target of Hannah's jealousy and emotional fits. So, when my dad met stepmom, Judy, and they talked about moving to her hometown, Portland, I begged to come with them. At this point, I was living with them almost full-time. Most of my things were at their house because Hannah liked to just destroy my stuff for fun. Dad took me to school and I would see my mom on the weekends, but even that might be cut short. My mom agreed after I said it was for the best. I was already miserable and she should focus all her time on Hannah. And it worked out. I had a family where I wasn't suddenly attacked for simply existing. And Hannah had all the attention she needed to have therapy and work on her problems. But I guess my mom told her that custody was awarded to my dad because he made more. Hannah was visiting me in Portland two years ago and asked if I ever resented the courts for not letting us grow up together. I asked where she heard that. I then said, I love you, Hannah, but I moved in with my dad because you treated me like crap. It recently came up that Hannah is back in therapy because she keeps remembering the comment I made and feels terrible about it. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not they whole. Look, your sister went through obvious mental problems and took them out on you. She was a confused and scared 10-year-old. I do not think she is a horrible person for that, and I love and commend the fact that you two have reconnected now that you are both adults. You are a star for seeing things how they are, not holding them against her. But that said, you are adults now. You are allowed to speak the truth and you did it in a respectful manner. Her behavior impacted your life. Things got a lot better when we were in high school and college. Distance really helped. But she seems to misremember a lot of what happened when we were kids. My mom told her a lot of things differently that I feel happened. And I think she didn't realize I remembered the things she did and still kind of resented. She might remember them less vividly or completely blocked them out since she was only 10 and your mother has been sheltering her. I mean, I hardly remember anything from when I was 10. You? That does not mean your feelings are not valid. People doing horrible things to others are much more likely to forget what they have done because they are not the ones who got hurt. It is not a shame to remember of this as long as you do not do it repeatedly slash hold it over her. I hope you got some therapy slash help with this as well. Stay safe. Not day haul for being honest with her as an adult and she probably needed therapy anyways. I honestly don't know why she stopped. She gets emotionally irregular if she doesn't go and talk stuff out. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not giving my daughter the basement suites after I renovated it only because she refused to give up her room upstairs? I've been remarried for two years now, and we recently had a son. I also have a 14-year-old daughter from my first marriage and a 12- and 9-year-old stepsons. When my wife was five months pregnant, I asked my daughter if she could swap rooms with my stepsons. We had only four bedrooms at the time. My daughter had the largest room. Our plan was for my daughter to take the second largest room, my stepson's to share her larger room, and convert the smallest room into a nursery. I thought this was a fairly reasonable ask, but my daughter made it into a huge fight. And worse was when my ex got involved, who then threatened to take me to court to reduce my custody of my daughter all over a room. This caused way too much stress at home, and I gave in which I do regret now. But I then proceeded to renovate the basement suite. With my father's help, the basement now had the largest bedroom with a lounge and a full bathroom. It's very easily the nicest part of the house. The kids then started fighting over who would move down there. And I very firmly told my daughter that I renovated it because she refused to give up her room. So my 12-year-old stepson gets to move down there. I don't know if it's just puberty, but my daughter has become extremely hostile and downright mean over this. She no longer comes over as much as before, citing the unfair room as the reason. My ex fully supports her, 
that I have to wait five months before I can even fight this in court. At this point, I'm not even sure it's worth the legal cost because she'll be 15 in December and her opinion will count in the court. Am I the a-haul for not giving in to my daughter's frankly bratty demands? It's killing me that my daughter feels like I'm pushing her out of the family. But I want to stay true to what I think is right. All attempts to get us in family therapy has been denied by my ex. And my poor father now feels terrible because he's being partly blamed since he helped with the renovations. I don't think you are an a-hole, but you haven't handled this well. Your daughter is in that awkward teen phase, and if the initial room was always hers, assuming your wife and stepsons moved into your house, then I can totally see her feelings displaced in favor of the new family and the new baby. I think it depends on how you ask her and explain the situation. She now sees a nice fancy room downstairs and her stepbrother get it and feels further punished. Not saying she's right, and she's definitely acting bratty and entitled. But you might want to examine why your daughter feels so displaced when she visits slash lives with you. Not day hell for this situation specifically. She literally got what she wanted though. They had to go a different course because she wasn't going to agree. So she kept what she wanted originally. She has no reason to feel punished or displaced. She's being enabled by her abusive mom. I've actively watched my sister go through some horrible custody crap, taking mistreatment from her son because her ex is brainwashing him to hate her, and she has to play nice for court purposes. She just moved to another state for a job opportunity and has a year to show that it's a good place for her son to be as well, slash that she can support him there. And his dad is already turning it around that the courts are deeming her unfit to be a mom 100%, instead of realizing that she was his main provider for 13 years. When it comes to manipulative exes and courts, there's no good way to handle this mess. I think Opie did everything they were supposed to do, to the point where he didn't force his daughter to move when she didn't want to. Daughter is being brainwashed by mom, plain and simple. Parental alienation is what I'm looking for. 100%. Also not day hole. Not day hole. If there is one here, it's your ex. Your request of your daughter was reasonable given the dynamics of the children in the household. At 14, she's old enough to understand this, but it sounds like there are other things at play that are influencing her behavior. The divorce, your ex poisoning the well, trying to blend families and her feeling pushed out that make me empathetic towards her.